Hello there, Nintendo World Report viewers. This is Josh Max, and with me today is... Seth McMahill with Nintendo of America. And you have been in charge of uh, localizing. Well, you started off localizing. Right. You want to tell us a little right. bit about what you've do, what you've done with the Pokemon uh, franchise? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been involved in it for 12 years now, uh, exclusively on Pokemon my whole time at Nintendo. And basically, I started in localization, um, which you know, simple terms is taking a Japanese game and making it feel like it was developed for an English audience. And then have kind of moved into um, basically, I guess you would say maybe. Uh, brand management type of role as well as a product marketing role and that's why you know I come to events like this um, do interviews and things like that but, but the, you know the real reason I'm here is to hang out with all the fans because I am a fan myself so it's really cool just to get a you know get to go out and get paid to hang out with a bunch of fellow nerds like myself so I mean you can't beat that no you really can't you really can't um, okay so Pokemon black and white too yes. why the change why not gray why why did you go with a direct sequel this time as opposed to like you know the gold and silver was kind of a sequel an indirect sequel right right you know um yeah gold and silver was somewhat of a a, a continuation because you got to go back to you know kanto after you went through johto um but pokemon black version 2 and pokemon white version 2 is a completely you know it's a different step it's something we've never done before everybody was expecting gray i mean honestly i was even expecting gray and then all of a sudden it was like no it's a two and it's like a two we're continuing the story and it's just i think really because unova the the region unova has so much to offer and so many places to explore that hadn't been um, really touched on in the first round that you know the, the developers game freak really felt the need to come back and tell even more of a story there and that's why we have it set two years later a lot of things have changed characters have grown and moved on and so people who've played the first pokemon black version pokemon white version get a chance to you know revisit a, a region they already have an affinity for and you know new players get to jump into a fantastic region um you know that's already established and and just go from there um, well, I mean, I, I'm playing it. I know you, you're playing it, yeah. and you, we're both liking it. I'm loving it. I was blown away when I first started playing it. At first, you know, when I heard a sequel or a, a continuation, I was kind of, you know, like I said, a little bit perplexed, and I was like, all right, well, let's give it a go, and I turned it on, and, and you know, in the past, we've always done what I call the trifecta, you know, diamond, pearl, platinum, uh, you know, gold, silver, crystal, and so I didn't know what to expect, but, um, you know, this one really blew my mind. I was like, well, this is actually like a new game, you know, a new story. Um, the fact that I was running into Mareeps and Riolus right out of the <laughs> gate blew my mind. I mean, I squealed when I found Mareep. I was just, yes! Exactly. Yeah, and so Mareep, you know, got out to my Ampharos now, and I'm rolling around, and, you know, poor Snivy is in the back seat, you know? Uh, well, I mean, so I also, in, for, uh, in relation to the trifecta that you, you just uh, mentioned, so... There were a bunch of Pokemon domain names registered, like PokemonGray.com. Right. You, do you know what happened there? Well, I mean, you know, that's the legal department at Nintendo usually handles that, but they do a lot of blanket registrations. Um, and I think, you know, I can't personally speak to that as to um, why they do it, but there's a bunch of different reasons. One is to secure possible future names, and then two also, um, you know, we know there's a lot of people out there that are looking for specific registrations. So you register a bunch of different sites, and then, hey, you never know which one's the real one, you know. So I'm sure they do it for a couple different reasons, but we just like to make sure that we are able to get out there and get the domains that we want so we don't have to deal with squatters because, you know, that's, that's always a bit difficult when you get a bunch of people to go out and do their own. Uh, registrations and having to talk to them so well I mean that's answers a lot of questions for me <laughs> um, uh, well I mean back to Pokemon black and white too uh, I mean what's the next step from here like do you think there's gonna be a new generation after this maybe Pokemon 3d uh, shiny Ruby and sparkling sapphire what, yeah, what do you would be awesome I mean, we had heart gold and soul silver those were awesome yeah I was I, I love that and the poke Walker just blew oh. me away and I've seen so many. I saw one guy here earlier who had five of them strapped across his chest like Rambo. I was like, <laughs> fantastic. Um, but, you know, it's hard to say. Right now, I'm really just focused on getting Black and White 2 out the door. I mean, it was such a labor of love, and there's so much work put into it. And then, you know, to putting on this event and, and finally getting it out the door that I'm not even sure what they're going to hit me with when I get back to the office next week. But, uh, you know, you can just look at the past history um, to kind of see, you know, what's going to happen going forward. And, you know, Pokemon is it's, it's here to stay. It's never, ever going to go away. And so that, that right there is telltale the fact that, yeah, we're going to see stuff around the corner and, you know, Pokemon will always be there for the fans, and there will always be new stuff for fans um, to enjoy and for people to try out and hop in and hopefully become fans. Well, I mean, Black and White 2 was a, it was a great opening uh, point for new players to come in, and it, it almost reinvented the game. 
Absolutely, absolutely it did. It took everything that was great about it and everything that was great about black version and white version and added so much stuff to it and then really rounded it out. I mean, like the habitat list and the Pokedex where you can see what Pokemon are in specific areas. Before you could check a Pokemon and it would tell you where it was. Now you can check an area and it'll tell you all the Pokemon that are in that area. Um, and like I said, coming out of the gate and running into classic characters like Psyduck, Riolu, you know, who you used to hatch from an egg and Ranger, um, you know, all that stuff. So it's really just kind of taken all of the generations of Pokemon up to the Nintendo DS and just perfected them. You know, even though I'm not technically supposed to say perfected in my mind, these are the two best Pokemon core titles out there. I mean, they're just amazing. I mean, they are really great. Yeah. Um, now, favorite gym leader from the new game? You know, I'm going to have to, I got to say Marlin because the tan line that he's rocking is hilarious. I mean, I mean, you know, it's it Roxy because I love it when you walk in there for the first time, you kind of hear speech. Yeah, the song. The song that's going on um, really kind of blew me away. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw Marlin off. I'm going to have to say Roxy just because she's this little punk girl who ends up trying to beat you down with some poison type Pokemon and just kind of throws you off. You don't know what to expect. I mean, there's a band playing. You're like, all right, a band, what's going on? Oh, it's a battle, yeah, you know? Like, why not metal? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Favorite Pokemon ever. Ever of all time. Oh man, that's that's. Top, I'll take top two or three. Top, I'll give you top three. Right. So Squirtle, because that was the one that got me into the franchise. Before I worked at Nintendo, I saw Squirtle at a Iwajimaya market before Pokemon hit the states, and that got me prepped for getting my first blue version. Before I worked at Nintendo, I still remember sitting down on the curb and picking my Squirtle, catching my first Pidgey. Um, so Squirtle is the first one. Torchic is my second, all because right. I always used to take Torchic and level him up to 100 without letting him evolve and then just beat people down with torture because it's like, oh, it's a cute little fire chicken. I'm like, burn, you know, and just just dust them. And then the third one, I'm going to have to say probably Dust Noir. And it's a strange choice, but I, I like the Pokemon. I like what it does. And, um, you know, during localization, I had done a lot of naming uh, of the characters, and I had just gotten done reading a Raymond Chandler novel. So I was really into crime noir and, and everything like that. So, you know, being able to, uh, to integrate that into uh, a character's name while still at the same time retain the meaning uh, and the developer's intentions with and everything was, was pretty cool. Um, and then one more spirit tomb. I mean, a, a tombstone that's trapped with, you know, like 7,000 screaming souls. Like, whoa, I'll take that, you know? So, so Dust, Dust Noir was really your baby, like your name baby. Uh, yeah, to an extent, yeah. I mean, you know, there's so many people working on the Pokemon group um, and the Pokemon brand in general, you know, the developers, and then there's Nintendo of America, there's the Pokemon Company International, who are the IP holders. But um, that was one that I really, uh, I really had a lot of fun with. I'm a huge fan of iFight Dragons. Why uh, Why did you pick them to play this event? Well, I mean, we wanted to really turn it up to 11, if you will, in the words of Spinal Tap, and, uh, and bring in a band. And after looking at all the different candidates, we just, we really love the music. We love the fact that they integrate a bunch of Nintendo, old school Nintendo stuff into their actual music. And I mean, if you look right over here, he's got all of this stuff rigged up to a Super Nintendo controller. Uh, which is awesome. They've got a power pad that they use. There's the, the pro stick right over there with the NES controller and just the music in general too and kind of the theme of it, the, the overall video game thing. I mean, they're not singing about Pokemon, but they're singing about things that people who play Pokemon or who play video games can relate to, you know, um, you know, save world or save girl, get world. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's so just, I don't know. It's a perfect match in my opinion. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, and they're on next, you know. I, oh, I know. I just <laughs> found this out. I'm very excited. Um, well, do you have any uh, closing thoughts, anything you want to say to everyone out there on the Internet? Well, first of all, I mean, thank you guys for being Pokemon fans and for keeping me employed very, very much. I have a house, you know, mortgage, two <laughs> kids, and a wife who demands things. Um, but uh, also, Genesect. Genesect is only available until the 12th of November, so that's one that you've got to grab. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't do it by the 12th of November, you're kind of out of luck on Genesect. But uh, you know, really, just just keep on playing Pokemon, keep on enjoying it, and uh, you know, we'll keep on putting out great, great products. I look forward to the next one. Oh, I look forward to putting it out there. Uh, this is Josh Max, Nintendo World Report, signing off. Yeah.